Ya Mustafa the chosen one sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Mustafa the chosen one sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala sayyidil anbiya wal mursalin amma ba'd fa a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim but dear respected viewers of Madani Channel, we welcome you once again in this beautiful program, Al Mustafa, the Chosen One. In this program, we talk about loving the beloved of Allah. We talk about the love of Mustafa, sallallahu ta'ala, alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa salam. And our previous programs, we have been discussing about that what are the reasons of loving someone. And alhamdulillah, we've covered a few aspects. And today, a beautiful uh, topic we brought for you that is following the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. No doubt, if somebody loves someone, he tries to imitate, he tries to copy that person, he tries to be like him. These are one of the signs of loving someone. Inshallah, today we'll be talking about that what is the importance of imitating uh, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam's best example. His uswai hasana. How important it is for us being Muslims to follow Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. So be with us from start to end. Inshallah, you're going to increase an immense amount of knowledge today. Inshallah, azza wa jal. But before we proceed ahead, my Shaykh Tariqat, Amir of Ahana Sunnah, founder of Dawat al Islam, founder of Madani Channel, Shaykh Tariqat, Hazrat Allama Mawlana Muhammad Ilyas Attar Qadri Damat Barakatuhum Al Aliya. He has given us a beautiful mindset that we should make good intentions before performing any permissible task or any good deed we're going to perform. Inshallah, I make this intention that I will present this program for the pleasure of Allah wa Ta'ala. So you should make this intention. You will be with us from start to end. Remember what you learn, act upon, and pass this knowledge on to others too. Inshallah, Azza wa Jal. And you can make many more intentions to multiply your reward. Why? But the Islamic brothers, it is the saying of the Prophet alayhi And a famous hadith and part of that hadith is Our actions are based upon our intentions. And remember, the more intentions one makes for a particular task or a good deed, Alhamdulillah, his reward is multiplied accordingly. So you can make as many good intentions as possible to multiply the reward you'll be gaining inshallah after watching this beautiful program Al Mustafa the Chosen One. Let's go towards our guest inshallah who is Mubalika Dawat Islami Muhammad Wasim Abbas Attal. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wasim, how are you doing? You okay? Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much once again that you have come in this beautiful program, Al-Mustafa, the Chosen One. As we have just mentioned about the introduction, the, the topic we have chosen today in Al-Mustafa, the Chosen One, that is following the beloved Prophet wasallam. First of all, I would like to ask you the very first question. What guidelines Quran itself gives us when it comes to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam? MashaAllah. First of all, um, regarding the topic, I think um, it's a beautiful topic, not only from the perspective of its importance, but also from the perspective of understanding what value it holds for our Iman and how important it is for us to follow in terms of succeed in this world as well as in the hereafter. Because many of us, uh, unfortunately, we've uh, deviated from the right path, which is we've deviated from uh, the path of following the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa So it's a beautiful uh, topic and I would especially congratulate you upon bringing this beautiful topic where the views of Madani channel can also understand the importance of this in our lives. And mashallah, you beautifully mentioned in your question as well that how does the Holy Quran guide us in terms of following the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa then one thing that we need to understand is that the Holy Quran is the Kalam of Allah Ta'ala. It's the word of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It is the divine book. And when it comes to this specific topic that we're discussing today, then the Holy Quran has guided us, has uh, told us that it's not an option. We have to follow the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. And within the Holy Quran at many places, we've been told to follow the beloved Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. 
like in Surah Ali Imran, verse number 31, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرُ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ And translation from Kanzul Iman, Say you, O beloved, that O people, if you love Allah, you should obey me. So we've been told the rules over here, that if you want to love Allah, then how would this happen? How can you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So if you love Allah, then you should obey me. Only then, Allah will love you. You love Allah, and how will Allah love you in return? If you obey me. And forgive your sins. So Allah will love you, and forgive your sins when you obey me. And Allah is the most forgiving, ever merciful. Now regarding this part of the verse, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ That, O oh, beloved, you say, that, O oh, people, if you love Allah Almighty, then obey me. Regarding this, we come to know from this part of the verse, that the claim of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will only become true when we obey the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Without obeying the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wa our claim for loving our Lord Almighty cannot be true. So that's one thing that we learn from this beautiful <coughs> verse. So if you want to prove your claim of loving Allah Almighty, uh, then we have to uh, adopt the obedience of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi Wa Alayhi Wa Sallam Furthermore, this has also been stated that the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala the claim of loving Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala cannot be true without following the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alayhi Wa Alayhi Wa Sallam and the one who wants to prove this claim of his what does he need to do? He needs to adopt the obedience, the slavery of Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. So, guided in the Holy Quran that you want to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how would this happen? This would be through obeying the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And there's one way, our ultimate goal is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Us loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one thing, but in return, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving us is beyond anything. For example, you love your beloved, but when you come to know that your beloved also loves you, that's a separate feeling. That cannot be mentioned in words. So we've been told over here that if you love Allah, then, oh, then uh, obey the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and then Allah will love you. So we come to know the conditions, uh, those uh, prerequisites that we want to prove that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we need to obey Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, then Allah Almighty will also love us and we will also be forgiven. So beautifully in this verse, we, we've been Mashallah. told that what is the importance of following the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and that by doing so, what we will achieve, and by not doing so, what we will miss out. MashaAllah. Many respected viewers of Madhuri Chari, Quran is telling us, SubhanAllah, that how can Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, how will Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala love us? Dear respected viewers of Madhuri Chari, everybody as the Malik of Dawah Islam is saying, we want, we claim, we wish that we love Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And everybody tries that he attains that, that he is able uh, to get that status that he is beloved of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. But Alhamdulillah, what a beautiful way forward. A simple solution is that we have to follow Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, then our claim is, will be left behind, right? That we say that we love Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, rather Allah tabarak wa ta'ala will make us, uh, insha'Allah azza wa jal, beloved, insha'Allah azza wa jal. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala will love us. And what is the solution? What is way forward? Loving <coughs> the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and doing ita'at of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, following the commands of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi Wherever Allah wa ta'ala mentioned that you have to follow my commands, he also mentioned Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam as commands to follow. Because a ta'at of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is actually the a ta'at of Allah wa ta'ala, is actually the obedience of Allah wa ta'ala. If you are obeying Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, that means you are obeying Allah wa ta'ala. Why? Because it has been mentioned in Quran or oh, and obey Allah and his noble Rasul if you have faith so dear respected viewers of Badri channel Quran 
Quran is saying that if you possess Iman, if you possess faith in your hearts, then definitely you will follow Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. You will do ittiba'a of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you will do ata'at of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ittiba'a and ata'at. There's a little bit difference. Ittiba'a is when you follow completely, exactly what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. And ata'at is that you follow the commands. You follow the hukam of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, which is actually the hukam of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, which is actually that you are doing the ata'at of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. You're following the commandments of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. So this is this is what dear respected viewers of Madani channel, Quran is explaining us, telling us that if you want to love Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, rather you should follow Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala sallam, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala himself will love you. So very simple, straightforward, that we need to obey Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. They respected viewers of Madani channels, Sahaba Ikram, when they heard these ayahs of Quran, when they learned from Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, and they used to do ittiba of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They would do ata'at of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of every possible act, they would try to imitate Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They would try to copy Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Aga Kareem alayhi salatu wa salam. They consecutively started fasting. Allahu Akbar. Sahabai kiram, they started imitating Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. They respected viewers of Madani channel. Do you know that what was the state of their weakness? That they had to uh, lean on the walls to come. They went so weak because of this consecutive fasting. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, what has happened to you? Why have you gone so weak? Sahaba Ikram Ali bin Adwan said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we saw you fasting consecutive days and we also started imitating you. We also started fasting. And that's the reason Allahu Akbar Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, Ayyukum mithli, who is like me amongst you? Allahu Akbar, dear respected viewers of Madani Shalli, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala himself feeds me. But look at this beauty of Sahaba Ikram's faith that they used to imitate each and everything they would see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doing this, they would start imitating, they would start copying Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would start following Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, this was the ittiba this was the ittiba of Sahaba Ikram they used to do when it came to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and when it came to obey Aka Karim alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam they would listen and hear each and every command commanded by Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, inshallah we will proceed towards our topic, we see your bas by <coughs> what would you like to add in this beautiful topic? How Sahaba Kiram and Awliya Kiram they would uh, imitate, they would copy Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi they would follow the commands of Haka Karim Alayhi Salatu The way Sahaba Kiram Alayhi Muridwan they follow the beloved Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, that's one of the reasons why we call them best amongst the creation. The true lovers of Prophet. The true Sallallahu lovers of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, they are those guides Sahaba. whom we look up to when we see guidance. So how they loved the Holy Prophet والسلام, how they respected the beloved Prophet والسلام, how they obeyed the Holy Prophet والسلام, all these attributes of this which we try to adopt today or we try to um, through the through Madani channel we try to propagate these teachings of Sahaba Akram Ridwan, which shall be the true uh, character of a believer we come to know why Sahaba Akram Ridwan, they were so highly ranked so they understood the message of the Holy Quran, they understood what Quran actually meant. If Quran is ordering us to obey the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, if beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam himself ordered them to follow him, then of course, who else would be there better than Sahaba Akram alayhi muridwan to follow the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. At another place in the Holy Quran in Surah Ahzab, verse number 21, Allah Almighty said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ Uswatun Hasana Liman Kana Yajullah Bal Yomal Akhira Vatakar Allah Kathira. Another uh, every verse of the Holy Quran is beautiful, but over here famous verse of Holy Indeed for you following the Messenger of Allah is best. best. Not good, not better, is best. And for whom? For the one who has hope in Allah and the last day 
and remembers Allah in abundance. So the one who remembers Allah in abundance, who has hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the last day for him, for the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu salam, is the best. And at another place in Surah Hashr, verse number 7, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Meaning that and whatever the messenger grants you, take it and refrain from whatever he forbids you. Again, our Iman, our following, our obedience is being tested over here. That whatever we are given by the Holy Prophet والسلام, take it. Whatever we are being forbidden from, we shall refrain from it. Meaning that Holy Prophet والسلام, whatever he commands us, do his ittiba, accept his command, listen to him. This is wajib upon you. The obedience of Holy Prophet والسلام, is wajib upon you and whatever he has refrained you from, be refrained from it. Do not oppose the Holy Prophet and further, do not be lazy in fulfilling his command. Not only do not uh, you know, let his command go, but do not be lazy in fulfilling his command. Undoubtedly, Allah Almighty gives severe punishment to the one who disobeys the beloved Prophet so we come to know again through the guidance of the Holy Quran, through the actions of the blessed companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum, that how important it is to obey the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and how important it is to ensure that we follow the teachings of the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and refrain from those things which the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, has told us to refrain from. MashaAllah, so beautiful. Inshallah, we'll proceed and we will mention a few other accounts when Sahaba Kiram and Ridwan, they followed Dr. Karim alayhi salatu wasalam, how beautifully they would imitate, copy, follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasalam. And Alhamdulillah, now it's the time. A beautiful segment which is also quite relating to today's topic that is chosen sunnah let's go towards our first segment chosen sunnah ya mustafa the chosen one sallallahu alayhi my dear respected viewers of madani channel today inshallah the sunnah we're going to discuss with you that is sunnah of applying fragrance subhanallah uh, sayyidina anas bin malik Radiallahu ta'ala and said, the noblest Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam had a special kind of fragrance which he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam used to apply. Subhanallah. Dear respected viewers of Madani Chal, it is a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam to apply fragrance. But let me tell you, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam in fact did not need a fragrance to apply it. Because his, subhanallah, entire body is full of fragrance, subhanallah. Allahu wa nidhi respected viewers of Madan channel, his blessed um, perspiration itself is one of the best Perfumes of the world, no doubt, dear respected viewers of Madani channel, he did not in fact need, but that was for us, that was for us, for the believers he to would, follow Rasulullah. He would make the fragrance fragrant. Allah Akbar, absolutely right, dear respected viewers of Madani channel, Aka Karim alayhi salatu wasalam's personality was such that Sahaba kiram, they wanted to find Aka Karim alayhi salatu wasalam, where Aka Karim alayhi salatu wasalam is, they would follow those streets which had become fragrant and through that path they would find Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the personality of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. But again, to teach us, to tell us, because we need this, subhanallah, he, uh, subhanallah, blessed fragrance uh, to kiss his blessed body. So he used to apply, but what he used to apply, a special kind of fragrance he had, as Sahabi Yasu said. That means if you use a fragrance, if you use that, you should get the best ether possible, and then you should use Following Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. Make intention inshaAllah azawajal. You will try to buy the best <coughs> ether possible and you will try to use remembering Laka Karim alayhi salatu wa salam that I am following, I am imitating, I am copying the way of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. InshaAllah there are so many other benefits for this. If you will remain fragrant, then people will come closer to you. You will have your personality more inshaAllah uh, elegant and, and further enhanced. But subhanAllah the best important intention one should have applying the fragrances that he is following the sunnah of Rasulullah so, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Our topic is also following Aka Karim alayhi salatu wa salam. We back. Regarding, of course, when we talk about the obedience of Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, 
we come to we've covered a few verses from the Holy Quran where we've been commanded to follow and obey the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, how the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam emphasized and commanded to obey him and to follow him. It is stated by Sayyidina Jabir radiallahu ta'ala that once Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he came in the court of the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and said the summary of the hadith is that we listen to what the people of book they say and uh, if you give us permission now what they say when we listen to it we like it if you give us permission can we write it down as well mm. the beloved prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, said that are you ama surprised and amazed like them and he alayhi salatu wasalam, carried on to say that i brought clear sharia for you bright and clear sharia for you even if musa alayhi salatu wasalam, were alive today then he would have had no other option than to follow me. Even Sayyidina Isa, Ruhullah, Ala Nabina, Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, when he will come to this earth, Allahu Akbar, whose Sharia, whose law would he follow? He will be following, following the way of Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. So when the beloved Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam is highlighting, is emphasizing the importance of following him through giving the example of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Then we come to know that the Lata Sunnah Isa, Ruhullah ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wasalam, even he will be following Allah. the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Then where do me and you stand? We have no other choice. The likes of Surah Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala and remember, Aqa alayhi salatu wasalam is uh, teaching Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala over here about who, who's among Khulafa Rashidin, who again um, is um, amongst Ashra and Mubashara. So he is the one who has been taught over here that this is the way you need to do. Sure. Then imagine this legacy is coming through generation to generation. Sure. Then how, and they were right there. The Holy Prophet <coughs> is apparently over there in front sure. of them. So at that moment of time, that was the best of the eras, at that moment of time when they had the source of guidance right in front of them, when they had the best of the creation right in front of them, then they being educated, they being taught that you need to obey me, you need to follow me, this is the way of salvation. Imagine now that apparently we've gone 1400 centuries plus away from that sacred era, how important it would be for us to follow the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam as compared to those companions who were back then in front of Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Sure. So the importance of following the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam in today's day and age has never been uh, more no. exactly uh, as ever. So before it's too late for us, through all these narrations, what we learn, what we understand is that there's no other way of salvation than to follow the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam than to obey the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and at the same time refrain from what the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam told us to refrain from. Mashallah Wasimah used the word salvation. What is salvation? Allahu Akbar, dear respected viewers of Madani channel, you need salvation. I need salvation. We need najat. We want to be successful in the hereafter. In fact, right, this is what we want. We've been asked to make dua. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fi al-akhirati hasana. We need the uh, goodness of this world and we should ask for the goodness of hereafter too. We need salvation from Allah wa ta'ala for this world and hereafter too. But actual salvation is for the hereafter. And uh, if we want salvation, then we have to follow Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallama. It has been mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari volume 4 page 499 hadith 7 to 8 0. One who follows my commandment will enter paradise and one who disobeys me will be one who denies Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us a clear message. Beautiful hadith is for us. If we want salvation, if we want success of the hereafter, then subhanallah, we have to obey Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam because his obedience is in fact the obedience of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. We were seen MashaAllah. Again, when we talk about the uh, obedience of Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, the best companions alayhi maridwan, they were completely submerged in the passion of following the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, in obeying the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. In Sahih Muslim, Imam Muslim rahmatullahi ta'ala quotes this hadith where Sayyidina Amr Farooq radiallahu ta'ala mm -hmm. once he kissed Hajar e Aswad, which is situated in the West Kaaba. <coughs> and what did he say? He says that by Allah, I know that you are a stone. You can neither benefit nor harm. But why am I kissing you? If I had I not seen the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam kissing you, then I would have not kissed you at all. 
Now again, in this uh, speech of Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala, no, in this uh, conversation of Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala, no, there's a great lesson for us that what was the purpose, what was the reason for him kissing Hajar Aswad? It was none other than because he saw the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam kissing it. Otherwise he knew that this stone can neither benefit me nor harm me. <coughs> the only purpose why he kissed it was because he followed the action of the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. There was no ifs and buts, there's no logic that he looked for. All he looked for was that my master kissed it, hence I'm kissing it. I know this can neither benefit me nor harm me, but following this action will benefit me. Following this action will benefit me in this world as well as in the hereafter. So look at their mindset. It wasn't just for no reason that they attained those ranks. It was because of their sacrifices and the passion they had to obey and follow the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. So following their legacy, following their footsteps, we shall also develop this kind of mindset that regardless whether we understand the wisdom of acting upon us or not, or not that's secondary, not even secondary. The main thing that we shall have in our minds is that this is the sunnah of the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. I'm following the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. This is more than enough for me. This will uh, make me successful in this world as well as in the hereafter. This was the mindset of the blessed companions Maridwan, and they succeeded in this no. world and in the hereafter. And if we want to attain the success of this world and the hereafter, we, we need to do the same. MashaAllah. The respective views of Madani channel, Sahaba Kiram did not think that what would people think about it? The way I am doing, the act I am performing, if it is the act of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam as beautiful seerah, then inshallah I will follow. Sahaba Kiram they did not think what people would think. And subhanAllah, beautiful hadith uh, is in front of me. It is uh, from Masnad Imam Ahmad, volume 8, page 171, hadith 21791. Sayyiduna Ummi Darda radiallahu ta'ala anha has said that whenever Sayyiduna Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala an spoke, he would smile. Whenever he spoke, he would smile. I humbly said, leave this habit. Otherwise, people will start thinking of you as a fool. Allahu Akbar. Dear respected viewers of Malikin, sometimes you're at home, right? You are discussing in a family, right? You, you, you are told something, Allahu Akbar. And uh, the wife is saying that people will start thinking you as a fool. And you should stop this habit that you, you always smile. Whenever you speak, you smile. Allahu Akbar. What was the answer of Sayyidina Abu Darda? Radiallahu ta'ala. And then he said, Whenever I saw or heard the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallama speaking, the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallama would smile. Amen. Hence, acting upon that sunnah, I also do it. That's what is in brackets. Dear respected viewers of Madani channel, this is the beauty of Sahaba Kiram. They used to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They would not think what people are going to think about me. How am I good, going to look like when I'm doing it? SubhanAllah. They would imitate Aka Karim alayhi salatu uh, uh, The way they, they used to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This ki tasmi sarote huwe haspare. Us tabassum ki abat. Pilakhu salam, patli patli gule quds ki patiya, un labo ki nazakat, pilakhu salam. Respected viewers of Madani Sharon, now it's the time for our second segment. segment let's go towards that. And that is chosen facts. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala, ala Muhammad. Ya Mustafa, the chosen one, sallallahu alayhi. Many respected viewers of Madani Shal, uh, we bring chosen facts for you. And these facts are for to increase knowledge, inshaAllah. And today, a few chosen facts we have brought for you. The very first is that who was the first martyr amongst the companions of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala on the plains of Karbala? Who was the first one who got martyred? SubhanAllah. This is the question. And the answer is the first shaheed amongst the companions of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala no, on the plains of Karbala is Sayyiduna Muslim bin Avsajah radiallahu ta'ala an. And who is the fortunate person that left Yazidi troops and joined the Husseini troops? It's quite famous, maybe a few of us you already know or the viewers of Madani channel they know. The fortunate person who left the Yazidi troops and joined Husseini troops is Sayyiduna Hur Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi. And who is the first son of 
سيدنا امام حسين رضي الله تعالى عنه who embraced martyrdom on the plains of karbala the answer is the first son of sayyidina imam hussain radiyallahu ta'ala an who embraced martyrdom on the plains of karbala is sayyidina ali akbar bin hussain radiyallahu ta'ala an these are the few chosen facts for you today inshallah you must have increased your knowledge regarding this subhanallah and inshallah if you keep watching this program we bring uh, different segments for you to increase your knowledge alhamdulillah we learned a sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam we heard few chosen facts and at the end we will be inshallah also will be sharing with you some chosen wazaif and you will be inshallah learning few wazaif also and in addition to that we've got one more segment coming which will be a beautiful message from uh, head of shura migran shura monana imran attari insha allah azza wa jalla is also included in today's program so keep watching we are talking about loving the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we are talking about the signs uh, which which show that somebody loves and one of the signs of loving is that one imitates his beloved follows his beloved and we are we are talking following the beloved prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam let's go towards our guest G. Masim Bhai what would you like to share in regards to the topic following the beloved mashallah uh, such a beautiful topic that uh, any narration that comes before us is a smile on our face no doubt and again smiling beautiful sunnah of the beloved prophet alayhi salatu as you mentioned in your uh, pre previous narration I was just going through this narration and um, it gives you a beautiful a sense joy, of so joy no, inside no. you that what time that would be when one said that Uthman Ghani radiyallahu ta'ala anhu called for some water Allahu Akbar and uh, he radiyallahu ta'ala anhu performed wudu subhanallah he performed ablution and he smiled after it and after that he said to his companions that are you not going to ask me that what made me smile so, that what exactly is it that I'm smiling for they said that, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, why did you smile? Then Sayyidina Uthman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala said that once the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam also performed wudu, ablution, nearby this place. And after performing wudu, he alayhi salatu wa sallam smiled. Subhanallah, subhanallah. He smiled and he alayhi salatu wa sallam asked the companions alayhi wa ridwan that will you not ask me what made me smile? Is the same question as Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala asked his companions. Yeah. The beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam also asked that, Will you not ask me that what made me smile? Then the beloved companions alayhi madidwan, they said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what has made you smile? Then the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, that when a person calls for the water of wudu, then washes his face, then Allah Almighty wipes his sins of face away. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Then, when he wipes his arms, his <coughs> elbow, his hand, including his elbow, then the sins of his elbow, his hand are forgiven. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. When he performs the masah of his head, then the sins of his head are forgiven. And when he washes his feet, then the sins of his feet are forgiven. Then in brackets it's written that I was also acting upon the same action of the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Now look at Uthman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala no. Action is the same. Question is the same. Allah. Answer is the same. You tell me the wisdom behind it. Allah. Shall I tell you the wisdom behind it? Sure. It is falling the Prophet. Shulhar. Falling Shulhar. the master. No doubt. I don't no apparent reason to no smile. No apparent reason. Aka alayhi salatu wasalam could have got a reason to smile. Because he was, he was looking, he knew that what's going to happen, what's happening. Indeed. Right? The sins are being erased. Allahu Akbar, wiped off. But what? Why did he smile? Because my master smiled. Sallallahu And why did he ask the same question? Because my master asked the same question. Why did he give the same reply? Because my master gave, gave the same reply. Look at the love. Subhanallah. Look at the passion to follow the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. If we want to judge our of our love for the very Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, then we need to uh, judge our <coughs> actions <coughs> against me. following the sunnahs of the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and the answer will be absolutely apparently clear in front of us that how big a lover are we of the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. When we're drinking water, we drink water on pretty much daily basis. 
Did I follow the Sunnah for the Prophet ﷺ was drinking water? Every day we eat food. Did I eat food according to the uh, Sunnah of the Beloved Prophet ﷺ? We sleep every day. Did I go to sleep according to the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? I converse every day. Did I converse according to the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? In short, Alhamdulillah, Islam teaches us everything. Did we perform those actions, the necessities of our life according to the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? Then the answer will be in front of us. How big a lover of Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam we are and where exactly do we stand? MashaAllah. Well, since my, uh, something comes in my mind, I would like to share with viewers of Madam Michelle. We're talking about loving the beloved of Allah. We're talking about following Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And dear respected viewers of Madam Michelle, every day, every day, every week, we go to marketplace, right? We go to supermarkets, we buy, we do shopping, we do grocery, right? At that moment in time, have you ever thought that I'm going to buy this fruit? But which fruit shall I buy? Shall I buy this fruit? Because Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam loved it, he liked it, he used to eat it. That's why I'm buying this fruit, because we have to buy that. But if we know, if we have knowledge that we would pick that with this intention, subhanAllah, this is going to increase love of Mustafa. This is going to give us reward, inshaAllah. This is going to give us salvation in this world and hereafter. We go to a meat shop. Right? We, if we know that what part of the goat Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam liked to eat Allah Akbar, if we, if we get that piece of meat and then we take it and we cook it and we eat it and we remember Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam if we are there to buy some vegetables if we know that what, which vegetables Aka Karim alayhi salatu wa sallam loved and he liked and he uh, subhanallah Eight, and if we buy them for the same reason that we are doing it for Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam as sunnah for the sake of sunnah faqa kareem alayhi wa salatu wa salam inshaAllah act of this will be regarded as inshaAllah reward inshaAllah this will give us salvation inshaAllah this will increase love of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam yes my dear respected viewers of Madani channel there have been some awliya there have been some friends of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala they did not eat a specific fruit throughout their life, entire life they did not eat. Why somebody asked them, you don't eat that food? The answer was, I don't know how my beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam ate it. Oh, which Lord. way he ate it. Oh, I don't know that way, that's why I don't eat that. Oh, Allah. Allah. This was the love of awliya. This was the love of the friends of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. When it came to follow Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. When it came to do ittiba and itaat of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa so make this intention from today inshallah whenever you would go to supermarket whenever you would do your grocery whenever you would go to a meat shop inshallah you will if you first you need to seek knowledge watch madani channel travel in madani kafile come to istinaat of dawat islami try to learn that what are Likes of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. What things Aka Karim alayhi wa salatu wa salam liked? Allahu Akbar. Dear respected viewers of Madani channel, today in this world we're seeing that if somebody loves somebody, he wants to know what are, what are his interests, Indeed. what are his likes and what are his dislikes. People, they want to know. If we are lovers of Mustafa, we are devotees of Prophet alayhi wa salatu wa salam. If we claim this, we need to seek knowledge. Dear Wasim, what do you say on this? Definitely, by all means. And... Uh, by doing so, this is the fundamental need, the fundamental uh, necessity of someone to be able to be following someone or someone to having the claim, um, his claim to be valid that he loves someone. So by all means, mashallah, how beautifully you explained that in our daily lives, how can we adopt this beautiful trait of uh, following the Holy Prophet ﷺ by looking for those meals or those ways in which we can also follow the beloved Prophet ﷺ. We'll anyways, eat any food and get filled up. Why not eat the food that is uh, beloved to Holy Prophet ﷺ as well? So we kill two birds with one stone, we get filled up as well. And we act upon the Sunnah as well. Get the when we well. buy the flower, why not get barley? Flower, you know, from the shops. I know of an Islamic brother, mashallah, he specially looked for a shop from where he could buy uh, the barley flower. Wow. Why? So he could bake those uh, loaves uh, through uh, from that uh, flower. Because, why? Because uh, uh, eating barley uh, uh, loaves sunnah. was the sunnah of the beloved Prophet. So, by all means, a beautiful message only if we can get this passion of following the beloved Prophet. And in the meanwhile, we um, bless companions. Alayhim wa Ridwan. Normally, uh, Rizwan, when we when we get used to something, 
it becomes very difficult for us to change our routine straight away. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult. But blessed companions, they had such passion of obeying the beloved Prophet والسلام, that if a command would come to them straight away, their life, everything sacrificed there and then on one saying of the Holy Prophet. So we come to know again how important it is and how they managed to uh, get those ranks in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, how we today with pride call them to be her sahabi and nabi, jannati, jannati and indeed they are and why because they left a legacy for us that we need to follow the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wa Dear respective viewers of Madari Jal, <coughs> there is a revival in front of me, <coughs> Sunan Abi Daud. Volume 4, page 343, hadith 4842. Once a beggar came to Ummul Mu'mineen, Sayyidatuna Aisha Siddiqa Tayyaba Tahira She gave him a piece of bread. Then he, a well-dressed person came. She gave him food after seating him. People asked the reason for this different treatment. She radiallahu ta'ala anha said, the beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallama has said, anzilun nasa manazilahum. Treat every person according to their status. Subhanallah. <laughs> Irrespective viewers of Madani Shal, Sayyid Zuna Aisha Siddiqa Tayyida Ta'ira radiallahu ta'ala anha remembered the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, the command of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, and she is following the commandment of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. She is doing it out of Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa maliki wa sallam. So this is how, whatever narration they remembered, whatever they remembered, Aka Karim alayhi salatu wa sallam has said, this is also a ta'at. It denies when you see something and you try, you try to imitate exactly the way Aka alayhi salatu wasalam did. And Sahaba Ikram did that. And Atarat is whatever order came from Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam, they would follow that. Straight away they would follow that. If they remembered it as a hadith, they would follow that. Throughout their life they followed. Allah Akbar. These were Sahaba Ikram. This was their following to Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. So dear viewers of Malaysia, we've got a segment, a chosen a message. Let's go towards that. A message from Nigrani Shura, Hanif Shura, Malana Imran at Tari. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala, ala Muhammad. Ya Mustafa, the chosen one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Mustafa, the chosen How many hours do you have to sleep? The time of your sleep, write it down because sleep is very important. All of your routine is linked with this. If you did not sleep well or rest properly, then you'll face problems in your daily routine work. While it is natural, the time you take for eating, write it. In addition to that, you have to note travel time which is spent to go to work and come back. Write it down. After that, you should note down the time you give to your mobile phone. Mobile time. While I'm trying to mention those activities in your daily routine where you can save your time, the time you're adding, you're sleeping extra. Or not getting up even after awaking. You're lying down. Okay, I get up, I get up. Did you realize that people waste 30 minutes or extra one hour on their bed? People waste a lot of time after eating. They keep on sitting there for no reason. Half an hour or good one hour is wasted like this. Traffic because you did not choose the right time. If you are aware of the fact that it's the traffic time, then you can carry out some other works in that particular time. And you can plan your journey accordingly, but this will only be possible if you wish to do so. Otherwise, you might waste an hour or two stuck in traffic. Furthermore, also notice how much time you spend on your mobile phone and how much time is wasted in unnecessary and useless gatherings. You will notice six or seven factors in your daily routine life where you can save time. Very important point. You must include time for your salah. That's the actual use of your time. And allow half an hour for each salah. Because you will need that much time in masjid. You would need to make wudu, offer salah, then offer nawafil and make dua. So at least you should allow 30 minutes for each salah. So if you allow 30 minutes of time duration, 5 salah. And you have 5 times daily prayers. And if you allow 30 minutes for each salah, that means 2 and a half hours. So nearly 2 or 2 and a half hours will be spent for your daily prayers. Still you will be left with four to six hours 
On daily basis, and generally speaking, even after eating, sleeping, everything, you'll be left with four to six hours daily. Those who complain that they don't have time, their problem is that they take unnecessary tasks on their shoulders, number one. And they have unnecessary passion to do everything by themselves. I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll also do that. It also happens at home. If works are divided at home, then you will have so much time left. And you can save a lot of time. And if works outside home are also divided, it will save time. So every individual has time, as long as the time is used properly. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has given us beautiful 24 hours. Division is equal in this matter. Whether man or woman, old or young, boy or girl, everyone is given equal time. Double to last 24 hours. So stop wasting this precious time whenever we are wasting. Use your time in productive works. Your life will be so relaxed that probably you would have so much time to do work, but you wouldn't have work to do in that time. Many respected viewers of my nation. Beautiful message by head of Shura Molana Imran at Tari. How can we save our time? Alhamdulillah, we try to bring a few messages also for you to increase this knowledge also, inshallah. I hope you must have learned a lot from this very short, brief and beautiful message by head of Shura Molana Imran at Tari, uh, inshallah. How do you respect it, viewers of Madani channel? Now it's time for chosen wazaif. Let's go to our final segment. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala, ala Muhammad. Ya Mustafa, the chosen one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear respected viewers of Madani channel, the first wazifa today that is refuge from calamities. Whoever invokes seven times at the time of Asr, Ya Wakilu, Ya Wakilu will get refuge from calamities, insha'Allah azzawajal. If you are inflicted in problems, calamities, alhamdulillah, you can recite Ya Wakilu seven times at the time of Asr Salah, insha'Allah, the uh, calamities will go away, insha'Allah azzawajal. The respected viewers of Madani Shalim, the second wazifa which we have brought for you today, that is, if somebody is suffering from abdominal pain, gas, or facing the risk of losing some organ of the body. So there are some people who are ill and uh, dear respected viewers of Madani Channel, for them this wazifa is that, that they should invoke Ya Muhyi seven times and perform dham on yourself. This invocation will provide relief insha'Allah azzawajal. So dear respected viewers of Madani Channel, these are the two chosen wazaif we've got for you. So you should recite uh, and you will gain the blessings. Finally, the time is too short for us, inshallah, today. Uh, that's just uh, probably maybe one minute left. Final message, let's straight from our guest, Mabali Gadawat Islami. What do we uh, derive from today's program? MashaAllah. Regarding, of course, we've been talking about obeying the beloved Prophet, والسلام, following his sunnahs. The problem we nowadays have that we've become so materialistic that we normally uh, at times say, it's just a sunnah, not important. Whereas the pious people of Allah Almighty, those who held and acclaimed rank in the court of Allah Almighty, they acted upon it because it was a sunnah. And we leave it because it's just a sunnah. Mm -hmm. So don't leave it considering it to be just a sunnah. Mashallah. Act upon it because it is a sunnah. Ashur. Mashallah. Beautiful message, dear respected viewers of Madani Channel. Keep watching Madani Channel and try to give da'wah, try to invite other people to watch Madani Channel, to watch this program too. Inshallah, they will learn. And if they learn because of you, you will get the reward too. Inshallah, Azzawajal. Until next time, keep watching Madani Channel, keep reciting Salat Alim Nabi. Inshallah, Azzawajal. See you again on the same channel, same times. Sallu ala al Habib, Sallallahu Ta'ala, Ala Muhammad. Ya Mustafa, the chosen one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Mustafa, the chosen one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.